Hello homeschool friends, welcome back to the land of Kakiak. My name is Laurel. I homeschool three boys using the Robinson curriculum as the base of our education. Today's video is about launching you if you are interested in starting RC. Okay, I made you something. <laughs> here's, a, here's part of it printed out. Um, this is gonna be down in the description box. I'm just, it's gonna be a Google Doc and you can just grab it if you would like it. But I'm gonna go through this with you today how, uh, what I wish I had when I was starting the Robinson curriculum. So as a disclaimer, I do not represent the Robinson curriculum in any way. I'm not affiliated with them in any way. I'm just an end user and I love it. It is open-ended enough to allow for a lot of flexibility and creativity, but that open-endedness and vagueness can be a point of stress when you're trying to start out and you just don't know if you're doing the right thing and you're like transitioning kids from public schools, so you don't know where to place them and all that kind of good stuff. Or maybe you're starting from scratch, you have a young kid and you're like, how do I bridge them into this curriculum? So that is what I am going to give you a crash course on today. So of course it's gonna have some of my own opinions thrown in here or there. Take those with a grain of salt. Um, I love RC. It's what I always go back to. I always go back to the pure form if I'm sick, if I'm burnt out, if some, I don't know, if anything stressful is going on in the family and I just need to ramp down my school, I go just to RC Pure and I know my kids are getting educated and they're staying in their routine. And so when I'm ready to ramp things back up, I can do that and we wouldn't have lost all our momentum. So I wanna go through these pages with you. Let's go. Okay. So this is the document. This is going to be where we start. You're going to print one of these out for each one of your kids. She's got their student name, age, grade, school year. We are going to figure out where to put them in their math, their reading, their writing, and if you need to do social studies and science, we'll talk about that too. I'm going to try to keep it simple. And I have other videos where I get more in depth about some stuff, but let's just keep it as simple as we can because this is just a launch, right? This is a rollout. You are going to need a homeschool planner. I hate to break it to you. <laughs> Anyways, I do. Anyways, here's a link to my undated printable homeschool planner. I use it in a binder and it just keeps my head on straight. Here, I'll show it to you really quick. Okay. See, I have a, I have a binder I picked. I've got my... my my own like little record keeping like where I'm going with things. Uh, I have a curriculum page where I write down like what curriculum they're using for their grade. I've got a plan how to train your child to plan. Okay here's that book list I was telling you about except that this one's a little different. I updated this one. It's not purely RC. This one has extra um, materials and books that I've inserted but I have a coding system for what <laughs> the kitty reading assignments. I don't want to like overwhelm you because this is not RC. This this is RC plus. <laughs> But you see I've got the three columns so I can write down. I want, you should have something like that in your planner. Um, and then I have a spot in the back for things I like start adding on, right? There were off list that I just decided to add on later. Um, I just have a blank page. I just write those in. Okay. Oh, this is just a document about the Henty books. I love GA Henty books for the kids. Okay. So each one of my kids has their own section. Okay. This is so messy because it's just their summer curriculum but I just do I plan by the week I highly recommend planning in pencil <laughs> and the nice thing about RC is you don't have to worry about sick days like you don't have to worry about getting behind because it's year-round six days a week which is something we have retained so I just plan every week and this is also where I like if anything gets graded I just write my grade in there and I use this because my state requires me to keep records or like a diary of some sort or lesson plan. So this keeps me on track every week. Oh, and I write down activities. I, I can like remember if there's stuff we're supposed to do that day, if it's going to interfere with school. But um, yeah, I have one for each kid. Like here's William's third grade stuff. And I've got lots of planning videos if you need those, but... So I highly recommend you get a planner. You don't have to get mine, but I highly recommend whatever you like. Okay, so then I made for you this curriculum rollout schedule, week one. 
So I have I have a Monday through Friday and then Saturday off and then we do Sunday. But I would say start your, if you're new to RC, you're starting new. On Monday, we're gonna focus on math. Um, take your sex and math placement test. It's good to keep it for your um, progress records. I actually give them the sex and test at the end of every year just to see how they're progressing. It just, and it's a consistent test, so. So if you're gonna do Saxon, take the Saxon placement test and then order whatever books and the stuff that they test into. If they're too young for that and they're just doing their math facts, then you know get whatever math fact resources you want. If it's you know worksheets, workbooks, flashcards, however you're gonna do that. Just put your order in, get the ball rolling. If you're gonna use the Ray's Arithmetic, which comes with RC, you can just print those out, print out what you want, or if you wanna order, um, Hard copies do that and you go check out mymathassistant.com if you're using Saxon. This is your homework. <laughs> this is what you're going to do. Take, give your kids their placement tests um, and order whatever you need to order, right? All right, and then I would just read aloud to your family. If you have young kids, do a family read aloud um, or you could let them free read, right? If they're older and, you know, do for like however long, but let's get them in the habit of getting into the schoolroom and all that good stuff, however you get, wherever you guys are gonna meet, whether it's at the dining room table, in the living room, like wherever, okay. On Tuesday, you're gonna set up your homeschool planner. So you saw mine, set up your homeschool planner this day and order printer by uh, student planners. This is my, this is not necessarily, RC doesn't tell you to have student planners or, or like mom planners either, but I highly recommend it. So this is how I would launch it, so. I just get some um, some cheap little ones off of uh, Amazon. I'll link them for you in the description box, but they just look like this. I have videos too on how the kids plan and stuff like that. But they're just that size. And I like this way where they can see the whole week on two pages. That's how I like the spread to be. And they just keep that on their book stand all the time. and. So if they are like, I don't know, second, first grade or second grade, maybe second grade and up, I'd say start training them on using their planner. Before that, you can just do a to-do list like for first grade or something that um, you can either help them fill out a to-do list or you can write it for them and they just check it off. But it's been, it's so helpful for keeping everybody on task and, and our homeschool on track. And then just do a read aloud or whatever, because you probably don't have your math materials in yet, right? So you've ordered them, but you don't have them yet. So yeah, just, just worry about setting up your planner today, getting the kids planners, maybe let them pick it out. That would be fun. Uh, Walmart will have like planners and stuff too. You know, I'm sure like, you know, lots of big box stores do. And then just read aloud to them from a book of your choice or have them have free read time. Okay, reading on Wednesday. So print or order 100 Easy Lessons or Alpha Phonics for Beginners, right? We talked about that. Print or order your McGuffey readers. You're gonna want those. And then read aloud to the family from a book of choice or let your student free read. Just, it's fine. If they come in, they just read. At least they're getting in the habit of coming in here, right? And reading. Okay, again, we're still um, working on reading on Thursday, so decide on a starting RC book list book for your student that can read independently. So print, order, or check out books from the library, right? So make sure you, if you're starting them on the RC list, um, you know, print that out and take the time. You're gonna, it's gonna take you, especially if you're new to it, you're gonna be looking at videos, like how do people bind these? Like how does this work? <laughs> or you know, if you can afford it, you can just order those books. Um, just find them online somewhere, try to buy, buy things used, or just go to your library and check it, see if they haven't, check it out. But I'm giving you a couple days to figure that out before you like start them on it. Okay, so optional, you could do the reading assessment from Don Potter on this day, which is also good to keep for your records. Again, you could do that reading assessment at the end of every year to see their progress over time. Um, do your read aloud to the family from book of choice or let your student free read. Okay, vocabulary, Friday. So print out the appropriate vocabulary exercises and keep in a student binder or vocab folder. So whatever book you're gonna start them on, you're going to go to the RC vocabulary stuff and you're going to print it out. I just print ours out one book at a time 
because you can't just print it all at once. There's like 1,600 pages of vocabulary exercises and, you know, all the lists and stuff. <laughs> so just print out what you need <laughs> every time they start a new book. Just have that be part of your um, new book prep, you know, day. Um, you're printing out your book, print out the book uh, vocabulary that goes with it. Okay, keep that in a folder or something for them. And then, or, you know, if you were going to use an alternative vocabulary program, like we like Wordly Wise or the Red Hot Root Words and stuff like that, then just order those workbooks. Okay, writing assessment. So this day, uh, for grades one through three, I would give dictation and assess their work, right? So I would just, I would dictate um, one to three sentences and then check it to see what they need to more practice on, like capitalization, is it spelling, is it punctuation, uh, is it handwriting, right? We wanna have, make some notes to ourselves what our goals are and what we need. And for grades four through six, I would ask them to write a paragraph on their favorite topic. Um, we talk, talked about that, you know, whatever topic they know a lot about that they're interested, that it won't um, be a drag for them to write on. <laughs> Have them do a paragraph, right? If they're older, if you think they can do a five paragraph essay, if they've had writing instruction before, feel free to tell them to write an essay and have some kind of checklist um, that you, you know, go off of uh, so that you know what you need to work on, right? If you're, just, if you're not sure like what is in um, an essay, then find an essay writing checklist. Uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure there's ones on, on online that you could probably find. Let's see, I do, if you did already go ahead and buy something like this, how to write a five paragraph essay, how to edit and revise your essay, you could just look in here and try to get some th information out of something like this, but you can just look up like essay writing rubric, like Google it and, and print something out and give yourself a guideline so that you have something tangible to be grading off of, you know what I mean? So let's say you've got their writing samples, you've assessed them, now you can either, you know, if they have a deficit in some area, like the, you're like they need to work on their sentence writing more, then find a resource for that. <laughs> if it's paragraph writing, find a resource for that. If it's grammar, find a resource for that, you know? If they are if they have it mastered, then you know, great, we can move them on to the next step. So I just always remember it's like, you know, kids write letters, words, uh, sentences, paragraphs, essays, right? You might throw in stories in there or something. So that was week one. This is all about assessing and ordering what they'll need, right? Okay, week two. This week, this Monday, I would have your first Monday morning meeting. I highly recommend this every Monday, first thing, have a Monday morning meeting where you guys get together and whatever you have planned for the week for them, you convey that to them. I like to do it, I write it just right on the chalkboard what I want them to put in their planner and what order. And again, I'll leave that planning meeting for you, like video in the description box. But just get everyone on the same page, like just make it a habit and then have everyone work together to set up your workspaces. So figure out like where you guys are gonna work, do you have desks, is it a big table? Is somebody sitting at the coffee table and somebody's sitting on the other couch like just figure out how you are going to sit physically and be comfortable and like where are you going to keep your books do they all have a little basket do you have a bookshelf and give them all their own section on the bookshelf personally we do both one kid because of where he sits it's easier for me to have a little basket <laughs> over by hand that just has all his current subjects uh, and stuff in that basket the other two, because of where they sit, it's easier for me to put their stuff on two little sections on the bookshelf right next to each other. So whatever, but get physically comfortable in your space. Okay, introduce one subject today, just one, whatever you have materials for. <laughs> so if you ordered your math stuff, but it's not here yet, don't do that one yet. <laughs> um, you know, maybe you've printed out that, um, you've printed out that um, RC book so have the kids start reading it, you know, start. Um, I give some kind of guidance for the general length of time for introducing a new subject or material, like how long they really have the energy to focus on that for. So I would say, and this, this is my opinion, <laughs> okay? Um, 
So preschool, they can really only sustain attention on something new like that for three to five minutes. And then you need to let them play something. So maybe you just want to try, you're trying to teach them to sing their ABCs that day, right? We just practice that for three to five minutes and let them do something else. Kindergarten, five to 10 minutes. Uh, first through third grade, 10 to 15 minutes for a, a subject. Um, fourth through fifth grade, I'd say 15 to 25 minutes. Sixth to eighth grade, one hour. Again, ninth through 12th grade, I'd say, oh, I said one hours, one hour. Um, that is like just to start them out on the stage, just starting out as a brand new subject. And I wouldn't expect, I would, I, I would do a nice slow, we're doing a nice slow rollout of the curriculum to allow for feedback and adjustments to be made. You will thank me later if you do this slow and don't try to do everything, bam, all at once. <laughs> and then just read aloud or let people free read and have a lovely day, right? You're done till tomorrow. You're gonna continue on with whatever first subject you started them on and um, continue to observe and give feedback and receive feedback from your students. So really pay attention when you're introducing this stuff, how it's going. Allow for adjustments. Like if you, if something is too long or I don't, you don't think they're doing it long enough, like adjust your time, start adjusting, figuring out, you know, like when to start school. Was that too early? Was it too late? Did the kids need to go to bed earlier because you're, they're getting up at, at the right time you think, but they're tired. Like maybe, we, you know, use this time to feel that stuff out and see how everyone's reacting. We're trying to get them, uh, regular like on a routine so they know what's coming up next so try to keep things the same as you can each day while we're slowly adding on something new and kind of lengthening the day slightly every, you know each week um you're gonna just continue on with that just keep working that first subject and doing read aloud or free read time until we get to the last day of the week make sure that you make a plan this week for the upcoming week. So now you have a subject and you have some feedback, both from your own observations and from the kids. So you use that information when you sit down with your planner, when you think about times of day, length of subject time, um, you know, are they liking it? Are you liking it? If it is it, it, is it a resource that's requiring too much of you? So be flexible and make adjustments as you see fit. Make sure that if you are starting any new books that you are printing them on your prep day. I call this like my planning and prep day. When I'm doing my planning, that's when I'm like, oh, they finished a book. I need to print them a new one. Which one is the next one on the list? Oh, I need to get the vocab ready for that too and put it in their folder, right? Whatever that is, looks like for you. Okay, then you're on to week three and you've got another Monday morning meeting. <laughs> Have that meeting. Make it a regular part of your day. Don't make it super long, you know. I like to, since I already have the plan made, I write it out on the board. I have my older two start writing it into their, their to-do list on each day and their planners. And then I get to grab my youngest and we do his Bible devotional during that time. You don't forget about the littles, okay? They, even if you're just reading to them or involve them in the things that you're doing, like if they're do if you're doing a planning meeting, like um like when Bo was in preschool, um I just had him sit up to the table with us and he would color or draw. Like I would just give him a book, so he kind of looked like he was doing the same thing that we were all doing, you know. Have a um if you have littles in here, have a, a box of toys <laughs> that they can get into and play with uh, in, in between the, their play breaks. Okay. So you're going to do then, you're in a meeting, you're going to introduce one new subject, just one, right? So let's say we started reading last week. This week um, you got in your writing materials. So um, you're going to whatever it is. If you're just doing copy work, you can start doing your copy work this week, right? So um, if you are, say, hopefully you got in your... Uh, paragraph writing or you're writing in rhetoric or whatever it is that you're going to use um, or your essay writing workbook. So hopefully that's in and just start it. So again, I would kind of use this for that new subject. Don't, you know, each day this week, just take it easy because we're just getting to know the new material and the new resources, you know, so 
don't say, okay, an, a full hour of writing on the very first day of writing. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> Just start you know, somewhere along these guidelines, okay? Um, the next day, you're now you've got two subjects, you're gonna continue on. Oh, we're still doing read alouds and free read time, right, afterwards, after our subjects. And we're just gonna keep doing that, just try to keep it nice and consistent, getting feedback, and then again, you're just gonna have your planning day, planning and prep day um, at the end of the day on your last day of the week. Okay, week four, introduce one new subject. So maybe now you finally have your math stuff in. Some, like, you know, sometimes it takes a while. You're buying Saxon books used off of eBay. It might take two weeks for it to get to you, right? Introduce that. Um, now the RC method is for them to correct their own schoolwork and to chart their own accuracy and stuff like that. For us that did not work out, I would recommend that you have signed up for my math assistant <laughs> at, by this point. So if you've done that, get them in there and you guys explore mymathassistant.com and you know enter in what book you got so that it has the right problem set for you and everything and just practice in that system and getting used to that all this week right if you are adding in um, just math fact um, practice for younger kids then just teach them the, the right pile wrong pile method if you want to do that with your flashcards or um, I really liked the triangle math flashcards. I'll put up my video in on that down below. But just however you decide to do that, um, just start it. Just it doesn't have, I mean, it doesn't be perfect, but just start it and adjust as you go. And then of course you've got uh, your read aloud or free read time. And by that point, um, that should, that's your basic reading, writing and arithmetic, correct? So, I would just, that took about four days, or four, yeah, four weeks to, to roll out, and hopefully things are going smoother, right, week after week. If you want to add in anything else, like another, like a science curriculum or history curriculum, I recommend first not doing it every day, maybe two or three times a week, maybe even one day a week, if it depends, right, on you guys. We personally do, we alternate science or history units and we just rotate back and forth. I don't do a whole year's worth and then a whole year's worth. I do like a unit because usually they're split up, you know, um, of history and then a unit of science. Like I just go, I go back and forth within the same resource level. And so it's like usually a couple months per one, right? Like two or three months. And I do them three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Then, you know, there's a lot, cause it's pretty odd, like it's not that uncommon to like not get to it one day. So I have, you know, four other days that week that I could do that lesson with them. So, but that's optional. Okay, let's say I've got my student. Let's say I have got Jane, right? And I'm gonna say, She's in grade uh, kindergarten, and the school year is 2023 to 24. Okay, so we're gonna think about our Robinson curriculum guidance for math. Their guidance is nothing but math facts, um, and then once at first, and then when those are mastered, then you are going to move into Saxon 5-4. If you're just starting out, um, you're not gonna be taking a sex, sex and placement test or anything like that. They're, they do provide with the curriculum Raise Arithmetic, which um, has books, oh gosh, they had like all of them in there. Um, how many are there? I don't know. You could start with Raise Arithmetic if you want something um, on in book form, um, or you could just pick any type of early, like numbers, um, number sense, like that kind of stuff. I have my own kind of path that I take with that in the early years. Um, I think I should probably do a series on, you know, RC, my own RC for Littles kind of thing. I know that Karen over at our house has a class. Um, I have not taken it, so I really don't know what, what's in there. But I've been thinking, I, I kind of like purposely like haven't taken it because I've been thinking about doing my own, but 
so I don't want to, I almost like don't want to see her so that I can't, I don't know, because I feel like once you see somebody else's ideas, do you know what I mean? I don't want to like steal her ideas <laughs> and then give them out for free. Do you know what I mean? So I'm almost like, I'm not, I'm purposely not watching it. Anyways. So if they're a young kid, you don't really need to worry about all this. You can just go to math back practice or write, just write in something like um, number sense, right? And whatever curriculum you want to use for number sense, then you could just write that in here, okay? So let's say that you have a child, let's say we have John, and John is in he's going to be in third grade, right? So does he know his math facts? You probably, you might know, you might not know. So you might just kind of check in on that, especially if you're transferring in from another curriculum or if you were in public school and you just don't quite know where they are, you can just go ahead and like get out the flashcards and quiz them or get one of the, a free math fact time test from online somewhere. And you know, if they get 100%, like you know that they know their math facts right so and then so then if that's the case if they know their math facts then you're going to do the saxon placement test i would just make sure that they test into five four if they don't test in to five four then maybe um practice your math facts some more or go over what you think they're they're missing based off that test together before starting five four um that would just be what i that's just my opinion on how to do that um, so, or you could put them into the whatever raise book, just take a look at them since they're in the RC curriculum. I also, um, in this document on the second page is links to a whole bunch of stuff. If you don't have RC, there is a place, this is a link here to all the RC, uh, sorry, this is a link to all the raise arithmetic PDFs. You can print it out there too, right? And you can buy them and you can buy hard copies like um, I think Want Media makes them. I'm pretty sure I bought I bought some. There's a here's a link to the math placement test too. If you need that, let's say your kid is in. So, just take a look. There is no placement test for the original uh, raised arithmetic books. So just take a look at the books, kind of skim through them and see. Just kind of take a look at where you think your kid could be if you wanted to if you're not sure if the kids are really young you can just start from the beginning i kind of think that the first book you could probably start them in uh, first grade with it with um raise arithmetic um but yeah it's not a self-teaching curriculum it's something that you're gonna have to kind of sit there with them and do and make sure they understand okay other math curriculum oh let's say you have a kid who is in you know, sixth grade. Yeah, I would definitely just have them take the Saxon placement test and just order whatever book, whatever book they test into, just start them there. And so write that in for your records. Yeah, if you're not gonna use these another curriculum or you know that, just write NA, not not applicable or whatever. Um, and then, so maybe they tested into Saxon uh, eight, seven or something like that, right? Just write it down for yourself, keep that um, test for your records and just put that order in and wait for it. Okay, then let's figure out where they're going to be. Oh, in other math curriculum, I put that in there because some of us just have a favorite math curriculum. So I've tried Raise, I've tried Saxon. Right now we are actually doing Right Start Math. So I actually, I actually did give you guys that link to their website just so that you could take a look on at that and check it out. Um, I'm planning on making um, a video more on Right Start Math more specifically and like how it's going and why exactly we changed and um, yeah, some good stuff. So stay tuned for that. So make your math plan here. Now what about reading, right? Littles, if you're starting from the very beginning, I 100 Easy Lessons is actually my favorite. I actually prefer it over Alpha Phonics. But Alpha Phonics is uh, provided with RC, but you can also find it at Don Potter's website. Again, I've linked it for you here under reading resources. So here's a link just if you want to buy this. This is super cheap. And you can even buy used ones. They're really cheap and it's super, super good. Um, here's free Alpha Phonics materials. This is Don Potter's website. Um, 
and then of course I linked to the McGuffey readers. So the McGuffey readers, the revised editions are also included with RC, you know, in printable form. Um, I think that they're reasonably enough price. If you can't, I would just buy them um, hard copy because they're just really nice to have. It's more convenient. And so for little, starting from the beginning, your, I would say 100 Easy Lessons or Alphaphonics. This is my favorite. So just I would just circle whichever one you prefer. RC Book List Start Book. Okay, I, I would say there's three ways to know, like to decide where you're going to start them with an older kid. If they're brand new, they're doing th this step anyways. And then I would just move them into the McGuffey readers after this. So if you are on the RC Start book, so you may notice that the McGuffey readers, um, you know, are on there actually in the book list. So you could just say um, you're going to start them. Say they've they're already done 100 easy lessons, you're going to start them on the primer, right? Or the first reader or whatever they are. If you, I personally do the book, I do, um, so I do 100 Easy Lessons or Alpha Phonics. I'm still thinking about switching over to Alpha Phonics after I've used 100 Easy Lessons to its maximum um, helpfulness and then switching over just because there's so many resources that go with this program and that I, I was interested in trying. But um, I say the RC book list are not really ready to start just reading independently yet. Um, even but, you know, they're not, sometimes there's a gap between this and the book list. I ran into that. So I just start doing McGuffey lessons with them. I just, every day we do McGuffey um, reading lessons and I'll, I'll have a follow-up video here soon where I go more into detail about that. I know I've talked about it before, but I have, an up, I have some updated things to say and give to you. And maybe have like a free read shelf, things that they can read on their own pretty comfortably. Um, but you want to make sure they're learning and they're getting all their phonics and seeing all the new spelling patterns and grammar and things are introduced in the McGuffey readers. And the McGuffey readers, you guys, are the absolute like star of our homeschool. Like they have revolutionized our homeschool. Um, they have brought morals and beauty and just quality and Oh, they're just so lovely. I just cannot say enough good things about the McGuffey readers, that they were what I needed that I didn't know that I needed until I found it, you know what I mean? Okay, so you can just start your reader from the beginning of the list, let's say they were ready, let's say they were older, let's say it was the third grader, right? And he is able to read pretty well on his own already, and you're switching into RC, you can start him all the way from the beginning, book one, that's fine, just have them read all the way through. You can leapfrog around the early books. That's actually what I did with my oldest when we transferred, we you know, transitioned into RC. I just picked some of the books, like the early books. I just kind of, and I skipped over the ones like the Bobsy Twins and stuff like that. They were just a little too babyish. And I didn't worry about the vocabulary um, for them or anything, I don't, I don't care. <laughs> They're gonna get enough vocabulary, I believe me. And, um, and then when it, it kind of hit a level where it seemed like his reading pace slowed down, it wasn't so easy, and it seemed like it was more on track with his developmental like age and everything, then we just started going forward like normal with the reading list, okay? So personally, this is not an RC thing, but I have a reading assignment that I assign with every um, book, and I will include a link to my video where I talk about that if you're interested. Okay. Or you can, the third option for starting the book list is you just pick a hard start somewhere on the list. Like you just decide, like I'm gonna have you start here. It's, it really, it's, it's, don't stress out about the book list. It's really, like I, I feel like I've heard so many people be really stressed about it and about, oh, where do I start them? I'm not sure. It really doesn't matter. Start from the beginning, leapfrog around the early books or just hard start them somewhere later down the road. It really doesn't matter. Just do what you think is best and maybe ask your kid where they would like to start, right? Vocabulary resource. So I wrote this here because RC does come with a vocabulary program and the words on their lists and their activities um, go with each book. So you could put here RC vocab if you wanna use their program. If you already have a favorite uh, vocabulary program or something else that you prefer, then it's okay, you can switch that out. You can just skip the RC vocab part. What I would still do though, is I would still 
either like print out the vocabulary lists and stick them in the back of the book or use them as a bookmark. Um, I made a bunch of bookmarks for a bunch of the books that I um, put in the files in the official Facebook page group if you're in there, which reminds me I need to finish those because I wanted to do them all just so that they can, I would have them read them before they started a book and like every day, you know, it's reading time, but first thing they do is they go down their vocab list, then they read their book for whatever the amount of time they're reading, and then they read it again. <laughs> and then we stick it in the back and use it kind of like a little dictionary. But so they're still getting exposed to those words. I'm, I'm wanting them to see them in context and how they're used and to help them with comprehension of the reading material. But I have just, the vocab program has just never worked very well for us as, as far as like the activities and stuff go. So I've always opted to just have a separate vocabulary program. So you can do that, that's fine. Um, I have used Latin root words and um, a red hot root words, I'm sorry, books one and two, and um, wordly wise. So let's say you want to use wordly wise, wordly wise, right? You just write that in there instead, okay? All right, so then writing. So I'm just saying, so if your child is on, oh, that printed weird. Anyways, <laughs> if your child is on the sentence level, paragraph level, or essay level. So let's say you've given them, they've given you their sample piece, you've assessed it, you're like, okay, they need help on this, this, or that, or hey, they have sentences, they're doing those really well. I think I think they could move on to paragraphs, right? Or whatever, or you know what, those are, that was a really, really good paragraph. I think we're ready to move on to essays. So then you're just gonna find a writing resource. I mean, if, if this is what I would do, I would find a writing resource that teaches that next step or whatever skill that they need to practice more. Um, it takes actually a pretty, like longer than you think for them to get really good at writing sentences and paragraphs. Like it's it's a longer, uh, it takes more practice and, and, and to write them well, you know what I mean? And feel comfortable like adding on, but Pick a resource and whatever you're gonna write, uh, do there, uh, write it there as your writing resource for them. I did give some writing resource links here. Here's copy work, sentence scaffolds, um, a stories and grammar, writing resource. This is an Evan Moore workbook, writing fabulous sentences and paragraphs. I use it with this weekly paragraph writing compliment. Uh, writing and rhetoric. Um, how to write a five-paragraph essay. It's another kind of workbook type of thing. So, whatever you want to use, if there's something you have something you love, write it in here. Just personally, how we do this. RC recommends nothing but copy work until the age of ten, and then essay writing. And that's really only the only guidance you get. <laughs> so, yeah, I work on the you know. Of course, we're right. We're, we do copy work, but probably we do copy work straight through until through third grade but with with some of those other resources sprinkled in so we'll be doing copy work all along right from um, as soon as they start the McGuffey primer you start doing copy work and I got links to where you can find that McGuffey copy work here the kind the ones that I created and use but then in like second grade I add in sentence scaffolds right we do that in conjunction with our copy work and then third grade stories and grammar we do that with our copy work and then writing fabulous sentences and paragraphs and the weekly paragraph writing compliment third grade for third or fourth grade for paragraph writing and then we go into writing and rhetoric and I just am going to stick with writing and rhetoric all the way through we're loving it so far I've used um, through we've gone through three levels so far I think it's gonna I think they have 11 levels I think they haven't come out with their 12th yet. I think they're working on it, but I think they will. And they say to start grades three to four. I'll wait until grade four because I want to make sure that all of these other components are pretty strong and that we've gone over grammar and stuff like that. And they've got some strength there before introducing like new writing concepts to them. But this is very gentle and easy on me. So I don't yeah, it does, it's, it's technically teacher-led, but it doesn't really feel, it, it adds no stress to me, I guess I'm saying. So this is what I use for essay writing, is this writing curriculum. Um, oh, and this, I have, I have, uh, I do own this one too, but we haven't actually used it, but I bought it because it looked really good. 
But then I found writing a rhetoric and I just loved it so much. But if you just want to go more RC and you want something to tell you how to write a five paragraph essay, here's something that does that. So let's say, you know, for my kindergartner, I have just copy work, right, for her. And for my third grader, I have copy work and I have um, stories and grammar to do, right? And for my sixth grader, well, they're in, he's in writing and rhetoric by then, right? So this is, this is for your record keeping. This will help you. This will also help you fill out your, um, whatchamacallit, your homeschool association, like applications when you have to put in what curriculum you're using for everything, for all your subjects. Don't forget to check the HSLDA website for what are the requirements in your state. So for my state, it requires social studies and science all the way from kindergarten through 12th grade. So RC does, it's meant to be a full curriculum and they cover those subjects in the reading list, in the book list. Since my kid can't read in kindergarten, <laughs> and you know, it takes a while for them to have good reading comprehension, like I'm gonna have to, to make sure that these are covered, I'm involved, right? So I think the easiest RC way to use your RC curriculum is just to read to your young ones from the book list and have them notebook. So I just mean like pull something. Um, I think I believe RC has lists where they have designated the subject matter cover. So if it's like science or nature study or whatever, um, and just pull one of those books and read it to them and then just have them notebook, like have them draw something or copy something out of the book or watch a video on YouTube on it, like read the tale of Jolly Robin with them, pull up a YouTube video on Robins or what other animals talk about the weather, you know, little things like that. Don't make anything crazy. Have them notebook a little bit on it. Yeah, it doesn't have to be anything crazy, you know. You can also always add on a separate science curriculum if you wanted to. Like we like Apologia Science. But there's lots of things you could do. I've got other videos on RC science options and that I'll try to link for you below. Okay. Oh, and also in the, um, just speaking of the book list and stuff, um, I did make, I wanted to cutesy up the book list for my own planner. <laughs> so I did make a, a book list with, you know, I know that it has all of those um, subjects listed with each book. And I put columns for up to three students so you could record like when they completed those books. And it's in the, um, Robinson curriculum official Facebook page in the files. So if you're a member of that group, you could grab that off of there and it would be helpful. Okay. Other, um, same with social studies, just pull something off the list. Even if it's farther down the list, it doesn't matter. Just read it to them and have the notebook on it. <laughs> okay. And again, you can add on a separate curriculum if you want to, like, uh, we use the good and the beautiful for, uh, history. Like we just really, I really like it. It is multi-level. It's the only thing that I have found that cover, like I can teach to all of my kids at one time as a family subject. Um, so we really like it. I heard they're discontinuing it and making a new one. I'm using, they haven't done it yet though. So you can still buy the, the one that I use and it's pretty affordable. So I feel like you get a lot for what you pay. So I, I like that. So this is something you could fill out. Let's say you wanted to do that. Say, okay, I'm gonna get, um, I'm gonna add on the good and the beautiful history. And I'm just going to read nature study books and notebook for science, right? So just make it up to yourself. Sorry, I'm not, I'm like standing up while I do this and my handwriting's horrible. <laughs> All right, so I hope that helps uh, you launch your RC homeschool. Just remember, you don't have to be 100% pure, but it's the it's a great place to start. And you can adjust as you see fit. If you already have something you love that you're using, you don't have to switch. If you already have a math curriculum that works, like don't switch. <laughs> if it's working and everyone's happy and they're learning, leave it alone. <laughs> There's lots of other things that you can add in along the way, right? But not at first. <laughs> Just go slow, stay with the basics until the kids are in a routine. Don't just add things, add things, add things. If you do feel like you wanna add something, feel free to take something away. 
a, you know, shorten something because you don't want them to be in school for eight hours or something, right? So be reasonable. Okay, I hope that was helpful. If you have any comments or questions or things that could help one another in this area with launching RC or just launching any new um, curriculum at all, if, if it would be helpful, leave us a comment. And I will talk to you later.